we all share a very common pet peeve. Overdoing stuff. Don't you just hate it? Pouring too much salt on your meal, scrolling and spending too much time on TikTok, buying too many shares of a stock that's about to plummet into the depths of the underworld, or, 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 I got one, breathing too much, in which you might actually be doing. In this video over here, we went over a meditation practice that has revived meditation for me. All we're doing is taking a big old breath in through the nose, plug in our nose and exhaling all the way down to the natural conclusion. And we're gonna hold it there at the bottom of the exhale until we feel the first potent desire to breathe. And then we're gonna inhale when we wanna breathe. Wait a few minutes before we do that again, but as we're waiting those few minutes, we're gonna do something called the perfect breath, which is breathing in for five and a half seconds and then breathing out for five and a half seconds. In this video, the one that you're currently watching with your own set of pearly clear eyeballs, mosquitoes are getting at me today. It's it's that morning, Skeeto. As I was saying, um, we're gonna go over the science and the why and the reasoning behind the steps of that breathing practice. Welcome to No Lab Code Required. My name is Johnny, and this is the science behind breathing meditation. I'd sit down in the grass, but I don't want the dew booty. It's kind of wet. Okay, this meditation starts off with us taking a big old inhale, then exhaling all the way to the natural conclusion and holding right there. Why? Why do we hold our breath at the bottom of the exhale? Well, uh, in short, just to be blunt, we breathe too much. I, I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, I have to get enough sleep. I have to eat good food. I have to exercise. Now you're telling me I can't breathe? But have you ever thought about it? We were never taught how to breathe. Of course, we all have our assumptions about breathing and we all hear stuff about it, but a lot of that stuff is anecdotal. What if we're all wrong? What does the science say? I remember the first time I heard someone call someone a mouth breather. I thought, hmm, that's an impressive insult. But I missed the whole point. We aren't supposed to breathe through our mouth. And about half of us do it. 50%, that's half the pie. I really don't want you to shrug this off. Chronic mouth breathing is a very serious condition with the negative effects happening relatively faster than any other condition. Breathing through your mouth affects you immediately. Journalist James Nestor, a pulmonary expert and author of New York Times bestseller, Breath, tried a very interesting experiment. It was 10 days of just mouth breathing, so silicon up the nose, and then 10 days of nasal breathing, and we collected data the whole way through. Absolutely awful. We were in seriously bad shape and, and really losing it. Not to try to be a drama queen about any of this, but this was really hard. His stress-related hormones spiked. A, de a diphtheroid corneum bacterium bug infested his nose. Of course, he snored, had sleep apnea, stomach aches, fatigue, irritation, testiness, and anxiety. All from breathing through the mouth. Then we went to nasal breathing, and without anything else, just by breathing through my nose, it all went away. This wasn't like some jackass stunt, you know? We weren't doing this just to unnecessarily inflict pain upon ourselves. We wanted to see what it was like to be in that 25 to 50 percent of the population that is habitually mouth breathing. We have a maze-like structure in our nose that filters, heats, and moistens air so that we can take it in comfortably. And it also staves off pathogens. Breathing through our mouth is basically like saying, scrap all that, just give me the air. Hashtag overdoing it. Okay, we've established that a lot of us don't really know how to breathe, but we still have to answer the question, why do we choose to hold our breath in this meditation? Do we really breathe too much? Let's take a look at a bit of an extreme character to really paint the picture. This is Emil, Emil Zatopek. He was an Olympic distance runner that set 18 world records, five Olympic medals, and revolutionized running by training in a way that no one else had thought to even attempt. Running without breathing. That's right, Zatopek was an absolute nutcase. A very fast and successful nutcase, but a nutcase nonetheless. He found that training to run as fast as you can without breathing taught his body how to do more with less. No, Zatopek was not the founder of breath holding, but he popularized this method because he became noticeably faster. I know what you're saying, Johnny, what the heck this guy got to do with me? I ain't running no 5K, and I'm definitely trying to set a record. Definitely just smushed a mosquito on my sweatshirt. I gotta get out of here. Bear with me, there is a problem wouldn't it be funny if I said, bear with me and a bear just can't, sorry. 
There's a problem flooding our generation and it's called hyperventilation. Lightheadedness accompanied by cool, moist hands, pale skin, perhaps some tunnel vision, chest pain, headaches, feelings of unreality, dread and agitation, heart palpitations, uncomfortable breathing, and tender shoulder muscles. You know we gotta relax them shoulders. These are all symptoms of hyperventilation, aka breathing too much. And the list doesn't end there, I just got tired of reading them. Hyperventilation is a silent assassin that largely gets by unnoticed. If you are an operating, functioning, breathing human of this current society and you don't have the information we're about to go over, over, then you are likely undergoing hyperventilation more often than you think. And I ain't saying this to scare you, I'm saying this because it's the truth. Hyperventilation is defined by breathing in excess of the body's needs for oxygen. Hashtag overdoing it. Where are you right now watching this? Hopefully you're comfortable. Hopefully you got some, some snacks, you know, some snacks. <laughs> Let's say a cannonball just came through the wall on your right. One of the first things your body is going to do is breathe fast and vigorous breaths. Why? And the way this works is so cool to me. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is a waste product of our metabolism, most notably our muscles. Meaning, as our muscles work, they create CO2 to be exhaled. Reason number one of why we breathe fast is to rapidly get CO2 out of the body. We can't inhale CO2, so as we breathe faster and faster, we're really only releasing more and more CO2. And that's great because as we release that CO2, we're making room for new CO2 that our muscles are about to make as we run from this cannonball. You still with me? Good. Reason number two, low concentration of CO2 in the blood from breathing fast causes phasal constriction or tightening of the blood vessels. This raises our blood pressure so we can shuttle blood to the working muscles faster. Reason number three, the literal threshold to activate our muscles lower. Reflex time is shortened and the signals of our synapses are sped up. So we basically turn into a ninja for a hot second. <laughs> All of these processes prime the body to get ready to move. If there's one thing humans are good at, it's getting out the jam. But, 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 what if there actually isn't a cannonball incident and you're perfectly safe where you are, but your mind is elsewhere? Maybe you're thinking of something that's causing you anger and anxiety and the line between reality and perception begins to blur and you work yourself up and you enter fight or flight mode. Fight and flight requires muscle contraction. And if your body is priming you to get ready to move when you're really not in danger, you are going to hyperventilate. The problem is you're actually not in danger and you have overbreathed yourself to the point of high blood pressure, blocking blood to the brain, and get this, low CO2 levels. See, oxygen is a little overrated. As this lab coder says, the problem in hyperventilation is not too much oxygen. The problem comes with a deficit of CO2. And this is why Emil Zadopek was running without breathing. His arms and legs are generating so much CO2, but he's not letting it out. And he also isn't breathing in any oxygen. Zadopek knew that his body would have to adapt to having more CO2 in the system therefore becoming more and more efficient with the oxygen it does have in its system. This is called the Bohr effect. The harder and the faster we breathe, the more our blood cells hold on to oxygen. They become very stingy. We don't want that. We don't want our blood cells just holding on to oxygen because we want to transport that oxygen. We want to get it to our brain, our organs, and our muscles. It's not enough to just have it in the body. We need to get it to where it needs to be. And that's only going to take place in the presence of more CO2. Here's a decent analogy. Let's say we go to New York. Ubers, Lyfts, cats cabs everywhere, taxi, whatever, you name it. Let's just say they're just picking people up but ain't dropping them off. Now you just got the roads filled with people getting rides but they're never getting to their destination. The same exact thing could be said about the oxygen in the blood. We can have it in the body but in order to get it to where it needs to be, we have to learn how to breathe less. Let's go baby! Everything we're about to go over next is going to sum it all up, put a cap, put a lid on it, put a bow on it, cherry on top. It's gonna make it all make sense, here we go. Remember, breathing is about meeting our metabolic needs. There's no need to be breathing a hurricane if we're just sitting there. Breathing too much is like fans stampeding into a junior red mission standing section in an NFL playoff game, just, just too much. See, our body doesn't breathe because of lack of oxygen. It breathes because of an abundance of CO2. And this is why we want to practice breath holding, to create an abundance of CO2 but to not breathe. This teaches the body to be more comfortable with CO2 and subconsciously causes us to breathe less, thus preventing hyperventilation. Hey, if you gotta run all that back and watch this again, go ahead, I ain't gonna hold you, cause I was a lie. But make sure you got it, and if it ain't making sense, go ahead, drop me a comment so we can get the question answered. It's time to move on. Why do we breathe in and out for five and a half seconds? 
to bring about a state of resonance frequency. And I know that sounds kind of mystical, but it ain't. This is concrete science. Most of us healthy folks will breathe in between nine to 24 breaths a minute. Inhale and exhale, that's one breath. We find that reducing and slowing our breath rate down to 4.5 to seven breaths a minute can bring about a state of resonance. This type of breathing is also called coherence breathing, which is a much better word than resonance frequency because a quick Google search tells us that coherence means the quality of forming a unified whole. Hmm. Mm, mm, mm. Your respiratory system has a rhythm or a frequency and your cardiovascular system has a rhythm or a frequency. Doing this type of breathing, we are merging these two frequencies into one. Not to say that the lungs and the heart are doing the same exact thing at the same exact pace, but the two rhythms coincide into one optimal rhythm it brings about some really good stuff. Our heartbeat and our breathing is automatic. So when we hop into the driver's seat and control that stuff, we're engaging with the system that usually does all of that stuff on its own. The autonomic system. That's right, the system that plays a massive role in how we respond to stress. We find that coherence breathing lowers blood pressure on the spot, helps us deal with anxiety, general emotions and mood, and it's used clinically to treat PTSD and depression. Definitely something we can go deeper into. If you are interested, just let me know. Other than that, hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. I'ma get about y'all with.